to touch upon the Burberry Spring 2024 collection um, that happened recently, right? Um, show here in London Fashion Week that happened, what, a couple of days ago, I think. And um, I don't know, off the first rip, I have to say I'm a little bit underwhelmed. I think it's clear to see, personally for me, that, you know, as great as Daniel Lee is as a, as a designer, as a creative, he definitely needed help to create that original Bottega Veneta that we saw on the runways, right? That original Bottega Veneta that first appeared on the runway, what was it, 2017 or something? Let's actually see what year it was. Um, I've gone the runway, Vogue runway site now. We see some of the last ones. I've got, is it 2017, I'm going to say, the first one when he came about? Oh, it wasn't. It was 2019. Oh, wow. Okay, my bad. It was 2019. It wasn't that far away. It was, a, it was a very short run, but a very um, eventful run. So when we first saw um, Daniel Lee, I think on a runway, maybe this was some pre fall here, but the first time he actually made a big mark, that's when the Lug Boots debuted, which was for 2019 ready to wear. It's clear to me to see, since we've seen what we see now at Burberry, that he needed the help. Whether it was um, Matteo Blasi, whether it was other people in the team, they definitely added to the fucking amazing debut that he did at Bottega Veneta. It wasn't all him because we've now seen when he's left to his own devices, right? When he's just there by himself, this guy isn't that great. This Daniel Lee guy isn't that great because that first Burberry collection, I think, was a good place to start. But now the second collection's down on the runway. And I just felt like I just saw a mass of fabric just like waddling down the catwalk. I didn't really see anything interesting. Um, it felt very forgettable. And considering the prices that we've seen so far, um, debuting on the site of the first drop, it's all going to be incredibly overpriced for what it is. And like I said, it just none of it felt interesting. That print that is featured here on look number five is hideous. If a streetwear person did it, Vanessa Friedman and people like that will be spitting feathers, right? It's fucking trash. Really, really is trash. Um, some of the styling bits on the show were really odd. I would, well, I'm going to read the review to find out, but I don't really know why a lot of the styling bits and pieces like the jackets and the shirts were kind of unbuttoned and then hanging off of the models. I'm not too sure if that was like a styling thing or the clips in the back kind of fell off. I don't know. Like this look on look number 12, it was very slouch, very all over the place. It just didn't look that great. Um, to be honest, not the slouchy bit, just the fact that it just didn't look good to my eyes when I was looking at it personally. And I didn't really see any standout looks. I'm not going to be honest. Um, again, this print, this chain print is awful look number 18 absolutely hate it and um there was nothing really that interesting that i saw that i was like okay wow um or maybe a standout piece that i think everybody's going to be gagging over maybe some bags maybe the shades i don't really know but very very forgettable and if i think if anything like this look number 29 come on man that could be easily zara that could be easily Zara. That's so high street, that thing there, number 29. So if I'm ragging on Skepta, I think Burberry deserves the same amount of smoke. And um, yeah, if anything, it kind of summed up a very lackluster London fashion week, to be fair. It wasn't that great. It felt a little bit flat. Um, there wasn't many interesting shows, really, that I thought were, were standing out. Um, again, look number 22. I'm not really too sure what this styling idea was to have the coat, you know, he's wearing the trench and it's basically hanging off his shoulders obviously showing off the gun so big up him but it's just i don't know what's the point of this look it's just awful maybe that look there number 31 is pretty cool i like that with this almost um cheetahs style print on the shirt i thought look number 34 was really nice as well um this model rocks it amazingly interesting to see the amount of black people walking on a catwalk for burberry and black people on the front row considering um the alleged incident that went down of a take of Veneta where daniel lee was fired from because he called some girl a flipping n-word in the flipping meeting allegedly who knows if that's true but it's just funny to see how quickly people have forgotten about it he hasn't been really raked over no coals there hasn't been an op-ed about it he's not really been grilled on it he didn't have to go on um the cutting room floor and have like a forgiveness interview he just got forgiven right the ministry just moved on fucking wild isn't it the things that you can get away with when you're white but fucking hell um <laughs> anyway yeah this stuff is just mad like this is giving congolese uncle number 38 like just really terrible for me in my personal opinion i didn't like any of it i thought it was fairly shitty and very very forgettable like come on bro look number 50 like come on come on man 
come on please tell me this floral stuff like all this stuff looks really really bad and that's how he ended the show with a guy walking down topless wearing a belt with the burberry emblem i think and some baggy trousers i don't really know what daniel is going on about um i think it's ending the same way as like nicholas Gasquet and ricardo tishi i wonder why that happens some designers just start off amazingly and then they just kind of you know the fire extinguishes itself over time i'm not sure what happens is it because they rinse all of their amazing ideas you know they blow it's like they blow their load on one collection right back in the day it's your basically your um uh it's basically your greatest work right it's your life's work because you've been working all your life up until this moment to do that exact thing and then after the fact maybe you've got nothing else left in the in the flipping you know in your creative um you know box to kind of draw from or it could be the truth is that fashion is more of a collective and a team thing so as much as fashion likes to lionize and idealize the designer it's actually about the team the collective and if you get the team correct you can make some real magic but if one or two people leave sometimes the magic goes it goes with them and you can never recreate it especially if daniel lee is meant to be a tyrant which i'm going to mention as well the article that fe um, from new york times that features Matteo blasi where he basically speaks about his time and it basically in roundabout terms it says you know daniel lee was a bit of a tyrant to work for so maybe because of that time a lot of the good people that he was working with previously didn't you know join him or leave bottega to join him at you know to join at burberry and i was struggling to find people or maybe the turnover is high at burberry also i don't know but how can you go from designing this collection right um for 2019 ready to wear for Bottega vanetta this absolute crazy collection that essentially launched daniel lee's career and changed the trajectory and the silhouettes and the aesthetic of men's fashion for a very brief period at that time those lug boots did so much damage i've never seen a boot in my area be so popular so quickly and i don't live in a very trendy part of london so i knew this thing was really hitting really hard and this was before even fakes dropped now there's a lot of fakes on aliexpress and shit but back when you couldn't get fakes i saw so many people wearing these fucking lug boots it was absolutely crazy so how can you go from designing this in 2019 very forward thinking uh very kind of trend setting just modern fresh new and then suddenly you're doing all of that shit that i showed you on the burberry thing like how is that possible like what is this how why is how does that happen i don't know let's read the review here um is it the same person reviewing is it nicole phillips as well or somebody else no sarah moa what's sarah moa saying um there was a nice relaxed family gathering of the vibe under the tent Daniel Lee pitched in the park of Highbury Fields for his second Burberry show. The quote, I thought it's good to take people to places they don't necessarily go to outside the obvious tourist bits. He should have took them to Wood Green. <laughs> That's what he should have took it. He should have put the show in Wood Green. So get putting it in fucking Highbury Fields. Go to fucking Wood Green <laughs> outside the cinema and do the, do the show there. Because London is ultimately made up of neighbourhoods, he says. Um, outside the leafy local venue, there was a very English food van dispensing eclair, what was that? Eccles cakes and Guinness bread and cups of tea. Bruv, very white, isn't it? Guinness bread a taste of cheerful traditional yorkshire hospitality familiar to lee's upbringing in the north of england inside there was a green park benches quilted green horse blankets and camping bottles and friendly um convergence of kind of guests who make a multicultural london and britain what they are uh blah, blah, blah. there were rap there was um, a front row of people that included kylie minogue uh, rachel weiss um naomi aki jason straitman and mo farah the good oh i was also dwe as well actually and kano and stuff and, and saka so big up them instead of sitting down chatting smiling and waving um setting the tone personality and a tone of subliminal messages for the british behemoth of fashion global uh, of a global fashion is what lee has been working on given the fashion itself is clear and relevant point of view that was obviously a crux of it clarity and crispness are the first impressions we're in a kind of frame of mind of not messing around with the trend you see these i wonder if these reviews are payola i read these reviews and they always feel like press releases like what's her opinion on the show like why is she telling us how he felt what the fucking temperature was the look of his lips like what's going on here so in place of last season's em um envelope enveloping wintry blanket coats here were lean knee-length low belted silhouettes for city life with precisely judged asymmetric lapels and minimal epaulets applied across women's wear and men's wear that just sounds like fabric to me sounds like fabric 
it sounds like buying fabric cutting it and draping it that sounds like horrendous to me um who wants to be in city life with all these fucking bits of fabric flying all over you that are going to get caught on lampposts caught on fucking bike locks caught on bike handlebars caught on fucking prams london is a big city but it's also very very cramped so those big shapes and shit aren't the greatest to maneuver around the city but hey what do i know they march very much in sync with the emerging post-maximalist feeling uh, for chic and easy clothes the same feeling carried through into the men's tailoring double-breasted two-piece tonic suits lee's overhaul of burberry branding is impressively smart and increasingly pervasive okay she thinks it's smart and pervasive work in progress in a luxury market oversaturated the logo she's taking the opposite tack so you're 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 talking about oversaturated logos but then you're endorsing this shitty chain thing come on bro come on this stinks like payola um it started with his taking apart the burberry prussum knight on the horseback logo what looked like bourgeoisie ladylike scarf prints on dresses and men's shirts and coats are usually a com are actually composed of images of metal carbine clips in the shape of a knight's horse <sighs> lame so those so that print is actually a carabiner that's been made into a shape of a horse Let's see if they got details of this shit because this looks i don't give a fuck okay no details so no one cares uh <laughs> what the hell okay cool um soon people will be reading burberry whenever they see them i don't i just see chain mail um all over print that you see in streetwear the same thing these fucking editors hate and say should be taken out of fashion because they want to return to tailoring which means a return to the whiteies basically that's a dog whistle that is the real dog whistle we want to return to tailoring yeah you want the blacks to get out the front row in it you don't want the jamba smoking marijuana you know fucking you know fans of whatever to be in the front row right you don't want them sitting there in their grills with their big chains and their big booty women's <laughs> um lee had moments it says here dedicated english summer flowers and fruit um cascading swarms of blue strawberries blue blown up meadow floor prints meadow flower prints sorry because it's definitely about taking wardrobe codes subverting them and making them feel more like london but it said it was smart well he said it was smart because he's caking and he's having a good life but this collection was pretty garbage pretty boring pretty uneventful and um yeah definitely not moving them a needle um, I think you're going to see a lot of people wearing Burberry because they got seeded it because I'm sure their seeding marketing program is on point because the front row was kind of crazy. I even saw fucking M Honcho. So whoever's doing the seeding and whatever over there is doing a good job of plugging Burberry in with people who are quintessentially UK, quintessentially London. Um, it's a bit pandery don't get me wrong but i understand the sentiment that's where the culture's at that's where the fun's at that's where the calls at go for it but make no mistake this clothes are shit i don't see people going and buying burberry as well as they were doing with bottega veneta when that was sick so it looks like everybody you'll see wearing bottega veneta sorry or burberry this daniel lee version of burberry is definitely getting it for free like that's my belief like there's no way you're paying for this shit because this shit is fucking garbage but again what do i know what 